and we are live. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. Still, still saying Glacier Ridge, we're still good. Um, so this is our Monster of the Week campaign. Yes, I know it says Dungeons and Dragons on the stream, but guess what? I don't have the option for Monster of the Week or TTRPG. So Twitch needs to update their settings if you want me to change it. Anyway. Get with the times, Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. There's other TTRPGs other than Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, so this is Monster of the Week. It's a powered by the Apocalypse uh, system. Um, meaning you roll 2d6, um, and then there's different you can hear talking. things you can get based on what you roll. So six and lower is a fail, uh, seven to nine is a mixed success, and ten plus is a complete success. Um, anyway, so uh, Monster of the Week is a game made by Michael Sands. Um, he based it on all of our favorite Monster of the Week TV series, uh, X-Files, Supernatural, Dresden Files, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, things like that. Anyway, so basically, the people who are playing are a group of paranormal investigators. Um, they are investigating uh, like cryptids and things like that. Um, they run a internet tv series basically uh that they just go around investigating these different claims that people saw things and with the research that the group has done it brought them to the nahani valley in uh the northwest territories in canada if you know about the nahani valley awesome if not research it a little bit and you'll find out why we picked this place um, so that's pretty much all the information I need to give you about the game. Um, oh, we're in a made up town called Glacier Ridge, um, but the Northwest Territories and Nahani Valley are real places. Glacier Ridge is r about two hours hike from Nahani Valley National Park. Um, okay. So, uh, last week was a exciting episode uh we woke up early went outside met with uh edmund who um is lovingly known to by frankie as dick for brains um and we know they have the best nicknames for everyone apparently i i don't know what they all are but they do have nicknames well you guys will figure them out eventually we'll, we'll get them there um anyway so edmund took the group of i believe it was charlie victor wyatt and maxine to the woods uh he was driving along letting you know about the area a little bit told you about the ruins in the woods and how they were a marker letting you know that you were just about an hour from town walking um when he brought you out to the woods, he said, what you've paid for is this service of bringing you out here. I don't know exactly where Elias lives, but this is the last place I saw him. And he was like, here's the keys for the mule, um, is what I believe we called it. Mule or gator. I don't know. Um, so yeah. Both they, are appropriate. They, <laughs> he dropped you off and he said, here's the keys. Please bring it back in one piece. And then he walked back to town. Um, and then you guys followed some broken branches trail. Um, as you guys were wandering through the woods, you started hearing things, hearing whispers and things in your ears. Uh, and you hit a fog that was very hard to navigate through. But Charlie took the lead and he led you guys to a clearing where the fog started to dissipate a little bit. And as you came to that clearing, you saw a man standing outside of a ramshackle cabin 
It didn't look like it was made all too well, but it obviously was made by someone who kind of knew what they were doing because it worked for them. Um, and when he saw you, he said, uh, I believe something along the lines of, you shouldn't have come here. Um, I have the, I have the script written down. Give me a second. <laughs> um, um, yeah, basically told you, you shouldn't have come here. Um, and that it's not safe. None of it is what it seems. Uh, and then he went inside his cabin. Uh, you guys were scared to go inside of his cabin. I think it was finally Charlie who went in. Is that correct? Uh, Maxine wanted to open the door, but I was the one that did it because security. Yeah. Uh, and when you opened the door, you saw him scribbling something down in the corner. Um, as you looked around, you saw that the whole uh, cabin was covered in um, like hand-drawn diagrams all over the walls, um, research materials, weird symbols and patterns, papers scattered across tables, things like that. Um, he says that he was decoding messages, um, that, uh, he was listening to the whispers in the fog, um, and he was telling you that it was a veil between dimensions, a portal, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> you started saying something to him, and then he jerked his head towards the window, and he's like, they're watching, always watching the shadows, the fog, they're guardians to the outside, the guardians of secrets that the world is ready to comprehend you guys were listening in um and i believe it was charlie again who heard beyond the mist realms intertwine revealing the threads of the cosmic tapestry does that sound familiar yes i even had that written down uh so he asked you guys to help him uh, Victor and Wyatt stayed behind at his cabin. Maxine and Charlie went with him. Elias charged off into the fog. And you guys followed behind. It was hard to follow him, but again, Charlie managed to make his way through. And they found Elias looking at some altar in a clearing. Um, and he talked about how the symbols, they... They were talking about a cosmic convergence, um, saying that this was a focal point of cosmic energies that permeate Nahani Valley. Um, and then he put his hands on the altar. And when he put his hands on the altar, they started to glow a little bit and then get covered in ice. And Charlie immediately put his hand to his mouth, on camera at least, and said <laughs> uh, that he knew where Rachel was. Um, and Elias did not want to let go, uh, and Charlie ended up kicking him off, uh, falling against the portal and taking one harm, which ended up being zero harm, because you have one armor, right? Or two armor yep. now? Uh, two. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you have armor against that, but yeah, you had, like, a frozen patch of armor on your chest area. Um, and he started yelling at you, saying, what did you do? You zip tied him, um, and then he didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, and then he convinced <laughs> Maxine tried convincing him to go peacefully with you guys, but she rolled a mixed success, which means he had to tell her what she had to do in order to do what she was asking. And what she wanted her to do was to grab the altar and find out for herself what the secrets had like what secrets it had to offer uh maxine grabbed the altar and heard whispering and promises of revealing secrets however uh she did not continue to hold um and they all left together 
and Elias at that point realized maybe he was going a little crazy out here listening to these whispers. Uh, so they went back to the cabin, collected all the stuff. Elias wasn't saying anything. Um, they brought Elias back to the police station, dropped him off, and I believe that's where we ended the episode. Sound right? Nice synopsis. No, we ended the episode going to the diner. Oh, well, you went to the diner then and had a discussion, I believe. Yep. Well, we didn't discuss anything, but that's where we are. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys are at the diner. Um, at this time, it is the... Oh, crap. I think it's the 24th of January, 2024. Um, yep. And it's about 11.30 in the afternoon. Or, sorry, 11.30 in the morning. Huh, long day. Uh, Frankie did not come with you, so you can update Frankie on anything you'd like to update Frankie with. <laughs> Nothing happened. Everything was cool. <laughs> uh, there was a forest fire. We put it out. <laughs> well, I'm glad no one was lost. No, no. There was... And you all look intact. <laughs> Do we? What, what does that mean? Have frostbite on an arm? Yeah, I think I got one on arm hands. on that last one. Hands. Do yeah, I sh I'll, I'll just hands. I'll just show Frankie my my hand my hands. Like I put out the fire with my hands, but no, it wasn't a fire. Well, you still have them at least, I guess. Um, yeah, no, that's good. Man, that's going to make eating suck. <laughs> it's like, yes, I think that's my number one priority now is eating. But yes, it was quite an experience. Do we, did we bring Elias with us or where? No, Elias is, is, in, is in custody at the police station. Jail. Oh, right. Oh up with a better name for Charlie because of this conversation, but can, keep going. I want to know what it was before. His original one was going to be Buzzkill. Oh. But then I remember... tracks. tracks. I remembered some other stuff that happened in the last few days, so he's got a better one. Uh. All right. Are you guys talking? Like, what are you talking about? What's going on? Well, does Charlie want to talk about his revelation? We it's found... Like we brought... Yeah. We found <laughs> an altar. Well, we found... What's his face? Elias. Elias out in the woods. Uh, okay. Crazy yeah. talking about the fog talking to him, which it is. I've heard it too. Saying something about the mist realms intertwining the threads of cosmic tapestry. Uh, and he went out on his own out into the fog and we followed him to an altar that was when he touched it, started turning him into one of those creatures. So there's just a, there's a rock out there that's turning people into those things? That's the yes. half way to describe it, yeah. yeah. I don't know, yeah. I think once we're able to talk to Elias, because it's like, he seemed to calm down after, well... After I touched the, he, he asked me to touch the altar and I did. And yeah, I heard, I heard voices too. It was, it's quite, uh, it is quite hard to pull away from that because, but yeah, it was a little too frightening to me. It just seemed, it was just taking over everything. And I, yeah, that wasn't anything that I wanted to do. 
but he seemed to calm right down after that. So I'm hoping that we can talk to him because where did this thing come from? Like, would he, I don't know if he has the answers to that or is he the one that built it or was it there before? Or, yeah. That rock is not earthly. Yeah. What about Rachel, any leads on her or is he incoherent the babbling? The creature we faced in the cave. That was Rachel. Uh, so, she touched this thing before, turned into this thing, and has been hiding out in the caves and visiting town. Uh, she touched it a bit. See, as far as we can tell, she disappeared a bit over a year ago. Uh, yeah, that tracks so, everything else. Do you think? Uh, do you think Charlie, if he had kept, like, if you hadn't kicked him off there, he would have fully yes. turned have into what she did? Yeah. I mean, I, she went to the cave with her diary after she changed. So I suspect there has to be some humanity left in her, and there weren't any sightings of the creature last winter. There. Uh, there were entries in her journal that dated past her last seen date. Uh, yeah. They were talking about her going crazy, which is sounds similar to what happened to Elias from being in those woods with the fog. Well, uh, yeah. I know even the little the voices that I heard when I touched, it's like, yeah, I could see where that would be an easy course to take. I don't know about you, Charlie. Uh, I, I, I got the impression from the interviews that uh, that we've conducted so far that Rachel and the doctor were in the woods together. Is that not right? That is the I think statement so. I got from the cop. With... He said something about her. He turned away going... for a second, and the next thing she was gone. Elias, when we were talking to him, I asked him about Rachel, and he said something about her being enlightened already, which would have been when she was changed. Wait, uh, did you write that down, or is that just you trying to remember? It's, it's memory. Yeah, that's not what he said. What did he say? He said, We don't talk about her. Yeah, He's, I was like, know, I thought he didn't want to talk about That's it. what he said in the cabin, but I mentioned her again at the altar, and he said something different there. I'd have to go back. That is true. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said more at the altar. Okay. Well, he I think was, it was definitely... something along the lines of she's already on the other side or so something. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, but he definitely wanted to join her, yeah, and wants us to do the same thing. Is that Stanley Cup? The, the other thing, the sightings of the creature they only started once winter rolled in this past season, which suggests the heat of summer was somehow able to keep her at bay. And like, people. I think we were talking about the fact that it seemed like she was just trying to scare people, but it's like, what, like, what's the point of that? Like scare them from what? Because, uh, Elias wants everybody to join and to get enlightened as it seems, but well, that's, yeah, I don't know. Miss Enlightened knows something he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, she's... Well, like Whatever you were saying, from question. her journal, she still had a little bit of hu humanity left in her. Like, that's what Charlie just brought out. So it's like... Her, um... Her last entry was something about Elias worrying as she travels further. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, he's, he's joined... He's joined that... It's like he he wants to get on that train now. I don't know if that's true now. Well, maybe not now, but he sure did. 
because when Charlie and I were with him, it was just like, let's, you know, basically join me and we'll, well know all the answers. Maybe she does know something that he didn't after the full conversion. Because yeah. he said when you touched it, you don't know what the questions are, but it was something you wanted to know the answer. Maybe those answers aren't anything good. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it seemed like a longing or, a, yeah, just things that I can't even describe it properly, like wanting to figure out stuff or know more stuff or it's just very enticing. That's for sure. But... I still have my senses not to just jump in like he seemed to want to, but it seems like it calmed down though, me doing it though. So maybe we can get some more info now, like now that we, he's calmed down a bit. I don't know. We took him to the police saying he fell into some water trying to off himself. No, no, and no, I, I, I realize that, but I'm just I'm saying that... Frankie. That's fine, oh, he'll have like a 72-hour hold at most. That's fine. Also, the kid tried to get the police to believe I kidnapped him. Well, yeah, but that's just Wyatt. I think he'd like all of us to be arrested, actually. That but... kid's fine. He's just... Just... Pushing the boundaries, I think. Testing everybody. He's just trying to figure us out. So, I, yeah. Buttons, they're more likely to leave you alone if you can push the right ones. Yeah. Yeah. So. Charlie, did they do anything for your frostbite at the hospital? They gave me a cream? Yes. An ointment. I'm just wondering whether I should... I'm just wondering if I should pop by the hospital. Well, maybe get something. Well, Charlie's have, frostbite I'm... was all over his body. Um, right, yours mine's just on my just hands. just your hands. Okay. I have some left over. You can have it. Is that okay, Keeper? I can just use his yeah, cream. Yeah, well, fine. I'm pretty sure if you slept, it would go away either way. So at yeah. least we're giving it a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that was quite intense. So we got all the papers from... I know that Wyatt was trying to give us hassle oh, about that, but yeah, we, we got all the papers from... We also took all of Eli's research and papers uh, to see what we can figure out is just crazy rambling and what might be legit. Fun. Right. So do we want to, because I know that we have the the big room like where we've met for breakfast and stuff but do we want to break it up or what do we want to do? And go uh, through it. Well. Is Tom I here or no? Like no, you're at the, you're at the diner. You're plate, not with Tom. Because I'm sure someone okay. ordered food. Yeah. Know, like Bianca French fry. Oh. I have spent plenty of time around crazy ramblings and less of it being like legit, so I might be able to figure out the difference. Yeah. yeah. So. There's that at least. Mike. So is it just in the van? Put Victor? It in hand. No, you would have had it in the mule. So you probably put it in like a oh, box or something. Um, okay. I'm assuming the mule is dropped off now. Um, and then you would have come back to town. Yeah, and I believe we said we dropped all of the uh, paperwork with Frankie at the room when we got back before we went for lunch. Did we? I, yeah. don't, I don't remember. I don't remember you saying that, but that's fine. And, and if we didn't, we meant to, so. Okay. Frankie, you'll know where it is. Frankie already has okay. all the paperwork. Uh, they're they're already, like, filing and doing all this stuff. On another note, Charlie, uh, to be a box, so. I yeah. feel like that altar is a safety threat to everybody that's living in this area. D 
you think we should uh, go talk to Edmund and see if we can do something with that? Who would Edmund care? It's a safety threat, but the issue is getting anyone else to believe it. So we smash it with a hammer? Or an axe? Or a giant axe that Frankie holds on their back? An axe and a sword? It's not on my back at all times. I don't think destroying it would be the best option. I think it'd be better to find a way to contain it. Would you say, like, what secure, is, so, contain, and protect? Plan B is smash it with a hammer? It's like, I, I don't know why they keep saying hammer. It's like, I know they mean axe. It's, <laughs> I'm picturing, like, sledgehammer to rock. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. But, you know, their oh. handy-dandy axe seemed to, seemed to do well. Didn't they attach a what were, they were talking about a, a knife, a little baby knife that they had attached to it. It was a like utility. Both ways. Oh, a utility knife, right. We could, as a backup, <laughs> try destroying it, but I suspect that will cause unforeseen issues. Yeah, I'm going to guess that uh, that she might not like us destroying that. Well, who knows? Or maybe the fog will have something hiding in it, or the stone itself will have something protect. We don't know. Did you feel, Charlie, like there was the fog was protecting the altar? I think the fog was trying to stop people from finding the altar. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed like it, for, like for you, like I was following you, but it's, it's yeah. It didn't seem like it was that tough for us to follow Elias, though. So, is is the altar try like whoever created the altar? Are they trying to get more? Yeah, I was following the trail he left behind. He didn't wasn't exactly good at hiding it. Yeah, like even finding his his uh, house I'll put in quotes his cabin it's like we followed with broken uh, well you guys are better at the tracking but yeah it just I don't know it just seemed like he was trying to lead us to it so it's like is that just him or is that something guiding him or I don't know. I'm very confused by the, is it the word juxtaposition? Well, like Elias, and then with her, we, she's trying we to know, We know this altar has been there for at least over a year. And in that time yeah. period, the only people who have found it are were the people essentially looking and researching into it specifically. So I I think they just were able to find it with time and motivation, not just by blind wondering. Yeah. Because of all people, you would think that Edmund would have found something because he's always tracking through there. But yeah, it seems like... Not that, necessarily. That's... Depends where the animals go. If the animals don't like oh, that true. fog, they don't like yeah, them true, voices, true, they're true, not going to go there. But... Yeah. So. All I know is we found it and it's not good. So with Elias, when we dropped him off, did they say, because Frankie, they were saying that I'm guessing from previous experience, it's like that they release you after a certain length of time. Like, did the police say anything when we brought him there or no? No. If it's psych at max, there's going to be a 72 hole. Because I'm assuming they don't oh. have anything like that here, do they? Like a psych ward? It's probably just a hole. This... Psych yeah. does not Holding max stuff? at 72 hours if the person ends up being a legitimate threat to themselves, though. He seemed pretty he... defeated, though, don't you think? Or no? Yeah, the the I believe the max they can hold someone is seventy two hours without more of a legitimate reason to go longer. Yeah. 
but it seemed like he kind of came to his senses. I don't know. I don't know how much of a hold that thing has on him. No, ideally we I can think take he care just of spent it before. way too long out in the middle of the woods by himself. Yeah. He went stir crazy. Very true. So... Ideally, we can find a way to contain it before he gets released, so if he does go looking for it, we don't have another creature on our hands. So how do we, we do that? We have to be released to someone. You but guys don't gotta worry about it. Charlie and I will deal with that rock. Okay. Yeah, make sure you get that rock secure, what... and then we can contain it, and that helps us protect people, right? That seems... Don't worry about it. I don't like the don't way worry. the Keeper said it's, that. It's just funny. We're gonna put up a big sign. Do not touch! I, I think I think, I think uh, Charlie probably gets it. I do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. If we find a way to contain it safely, I have some old contacts from my time in the military that may be able to get it somewhere safe. You Is it a big warehouse? Thing? You both are talking at the same time. Go ahead, Frankie. You trust the military with that thing? I trust the certain people in the military with it. Yeah. Some people can thing. trust people, Frankie. Maybe Frankie's had experiences where they have had their trust betrayed. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna do it again because he, he was okay when I did it. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed it. I was grabbing my water. <laughs> okay, I did it, and then I realized you weren't looking at the camera. <laughs> um, okay. Are you guys going to be looking through his stuff, or, like, what? what's your next step here? Um, do, we have to, do we have to investigate, or how do we do that? Because uh, we did bring it to Frankie. Nope, I'll just read it off to you. What looks like just, like, random gibberish and what it looks like him act like actual substance. i'll give you i'll give you a quick tip here it's mostly just is there red threads involved no it's mostly just random gibberish okay mostly <laughs> well like there's truth behind everything he's writing but it all is behind the thing is through the lens of like a conspiracy theorist and somebody who's gone a little bit insane even the things that he's writing down that are truth still come off a little bit gibberish crazy like i, so I actually like, wish i wish oliver was here for this part crazy twist because it's like one is the fog is not merely a weather phenomenon but a veil between dimensions concealing ancient truths and cosmic revelations it whispers secrets lost to time, waiting to be deciphered by those brave enough to listen. The red eyes in the woods are not me a mere curiosity, but guardians of forbidden knowledge. They watch, they wait, their gaze penetrating the very fabric of reality. What do they see that we cannot? Stuff like that. So, this may all be crazy and not actually help us with an investigation, but this could be good content for a show. That is true. Yeah. Cause she ta uh she talked about red eyes too, right? That they were being watched by red eyes, I think in well, her we, we've seen the red eyes. No no no, but yeah, she also mentioned it though. She is in Rachel? Yeah. In the Did she? Yeah. In her journal? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Elias and I delving into mysteries, watching us, red eyes, uneasiness. See? If she's seen red eyes, there might be another creature out there. Yeah, true. Uh, but the Elias' mentions I'm, are only being one. I'm just looking through the journal. 
Uh huh. Oh yeah, there they are. It's like I just I just listened to it, so I was pretty sure it was. Yep. No, you're right. Elias was saying there's only one creature though, so whatever creature they were seeing, maybe something happened to it. Or when Rachel took the stone, she replaced the creature and that person went back to normal. That'd be a hard one to test. Yeah. Or just... Not so hard if we capture Rachel and then hold the rock, if there's two. Yeah, but who's going to is... hold the rock and turn into one of those creatures? Why? Oh, Maxine, she's already halfway there. <laughs> if only we had access to expendable people. Wait a second, we do. Oliver. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Poor Oliver. He's my best friend. Well, he thinks he's your best friend. Yeah, he thinks he's my best friend. No, he just wants to shag you and he's out of his mind. Well, I agree with the out of his mind part. And it's like, yeah. I'm sorry, did, uh, did Frankie just use the term shag? Yes. Victor, I think we need to figure out a bit more of where he got his gun. He might have killed someone or robbed from a crime scene. Give me Frankie, a second. Frankie has a new hat. She just got deposited onto my head and I've been trying to figure out how to grab her with that. She looks very hat. content with where she is. Oh, this and is Frankie's fine. gone. Oh, Frankie's has Oh, Frankie's gone. Oh, but gone. Mm-mm, whatever. I can't see it. I can't look up. You're disappearing. <laughs> and it needs some of your face in the camera for it to be brought back in. <laughs> okay, sweet girl. <laughs> All right. I asked him to take her out to go potty, and he just deposited her on my head. That's a good place for her. You look happy. All right. So, uh, Victor and uh, Charlie, you're going back to the woods. Did you with the rock? Are you guys uh, staying put and looking over Elias's notes? I think that'd be fine. Um, Frankie, is that what you want to do? Yeah, I'm going to look through this stuff for a while and then probably go look into some stuff later this evening. Alright, well that'll give us some time to get rid of this uh, this rock figured out. And then uh, that way you guys aren't without security details. Yeah, I'll be fine. When they've got their axe, I've got my gun. Victor, any idea how we can actually safely handle it? Uh, I was going to go and talk to Edmund about maybe some nets, some way to like net it, pull it out, and then so we don't handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah, touching it is a bad idea. Uh, I agree from what you guys said. I mean, I never saw it happen, but I believe you. This may work. Uh, was it essentially a large stone? Uh, no, it was like um... the best way I could describe, like altar. It was like an altar, like a Skyrim altar. Not that like, big. Kind of like, uh, kind of like podium shaped, and it looked like a flat surface on top on a kind of an angle down the sides there were symbols of it um but yeah it looked like a podium angled towards uh elias and then down the sides there were all these symbols and everything along the back and then there was like written in the front in some weird language there was other like symbols and letterings as well uh made of stone i'd assume yes yeah so it it would weigh quite a bit yes They need to be some pretty strong nets. 
Well, if it's all one solid piece, then we can chain it, we can strap it, whatever we need to do, to, and the mule can pull it on on skis or whatever we need. Like we can, we can, we'll figure it out. Making it, putting, getting it on a sled could work. Yeah. So we just need to get the equipment that we need from Edmund or whoever, and we should be able to go from there. Just rent it from the lodge. I'm sure people do that all the time. Well, I'll have a chat with Evelyn and then we can, uh, I'll see what she thinks and then we'll go from there. Sounds good. All right, I'll come get you, uh, Charlie, once I got uh, some more information. Okay, I'll help out around here as I can. All right, we'll talk to you in a few minutes. So and I get up and I go and pay the bill or whatever. I guess it's all covered anyway. Yeah, so we're just taking the stuff wherever, back whenever you're here or in the lodge, everything's paid for. Okay, so then I go and I try and find Evelyn. Okay. I imagine she's not far because usually she's serving. Yeah, no, she's time. she's the one who pretty much does everything here. Um, so you're going to go find her? Yep. Uh, and she, yeah, she's busting the table, taking stuff to the back. She's like, oh, um, can I help you? Yeah, uh, Evelyn, when you're not too busy, I just need like five minutes of your time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let me just go drop this off. Um, she goes to the back, comes back out. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, you wouldn't happen to know uh, either a place or a company or whatever that would have like uh, uh, strapping and sleds, things like that we could rent to, to like transport something heavy? Rent? I'm not too sure. Um, but Wilderness Outfitters does sell, like, straps and things like that, and camping gear, um, different things that you would need in the outdoors, so. All right, uh, that, that'll work, I'm, I'm sure that doesn't matter whether we buy or rent it, so uh, that'll be fine. Uh, I believe you can rent stuff from the hunting lodge to get you, like, deeper in the woods, but I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for. All right, I, either or, that's perfect, that's the information I was looking for, so. Uh, thank you very much. Where is where is Victor from? Because it sounds like he has an accent. Oh, he's like, from all over. Where? He doesn't know it. Sometimes he's southern. Sometimes he's northern. I don't know what. He's just all over. He, he's from wherever he decides he's from at that point. I noticed that too. It'd be nice if he'd make up his mind. Yeah. He's incognito. Hiding his real identity. Who is Victor? Uh, so yeah, she told you about the one place, and then, um, that, that's the information you need, I guess? Yeah, I'll go check them out. Okay. Uh, so, if you look at the map, I don't know if anybody's in here, because I have my characters hidden. I, I, I am in here. Wilderness Outfitters is right down the road from you guys. Okay, um, so I did. There it is, right there. Yeah, I feel like maybe you're from the south. I don't know. What are we talking about from the south? Me, Victor. Victor. I just, I'm just hearing some nuances to this voice I haven't heard before. Uh, yes. Well, his voice has All changed right, well, since I'm the first episode. Stare so. at some scribbles for a while. Okay. Um, Are we staying in the diner? Do we want to go back to the go back to lodge? Yeah. You can, you can go to your room or the uh, the briefing room, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was probably gonna All end right, up so... like sitting on the bed with like papers oh, yeah. around me in your room. Okay. 
that's fine uh so yeah like i said basically the so i can keep on going uh correct the shadows are not cast by mere trees but are harbingers of unseen forces manifestations of cosmic entities that lurk just beyond your perception they dance and weave revealing glimpses of forgotten realms so everything that he is referencing here talks about other dimensions however when he 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 brings this up in his writings actually the ancient stone altar is not a relic of bygone civilizations but a conduit for cosmic energies its inscriptions speak of cosmic convergence a moment when the barriers between dimensions wane allowing for communion with higher planes of existence so right there he's talking about the altar obviously um but he is under the impression that what he has determined from the symbols and things that he's seen on the side is that it is some transporter or portal opening to another dimension what was witnessed is not even close to that uh the whispers in the fog are not random murmurs but echoes of cosmic intelligence encoded messages from beings beyond our comprehension they be beckon they tease promising uh an enlightenment to those who dare to heed their call the woods themselves are not just trees but sentient beings guardians of the secrets that lie be buried beneath the earth they remember they whisper their roots intertwined with the fabric of reality the truth is not always what it seems. It is hidden in plain sight, waiting to be uncovered by those willing to question the nature of reality itself. Will you be the one to embrace the truth, or will you remain shackled by the illusions of the mundane world? And then you put your hands on the altar. That's what happens, Frankie. Yeah, you have to chant that. So, um, as he keeps going, it seems to get more and more crazy. Okay, cool. So everything past, like, sentient trees that can... Yeah. Toss to tr um <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> not sharp I think Oliver recorded reading those would be perfect for the show he could be the aliens guy <laughs> he is the aliens guy he's not the aliens guy he's the lizard people guy yeah my like Yeah, uh, I'll give you just one. <laughs> the truth, my dear adventurers, is not a truth. It's a cosmic banana peel waiting to slip us up and send us tumbling down the rabbit hole of cosmic absurd absurdity. So grab your banana shoes and dance the cha-cha of enlightenment with me, won't you? That's just one. I really want Oliver to read these. <laughs> All right. Does our team have, like, a text group chat? Sure. Sure. Uh, no context. I'm just going to text the truth is a cosmic banana peel, in quotation marks. Perfect. <laughs> so you all, as you're heading out to your places, get this text message from them. You should do that to the actual group chat for the people who aren't here. I got it. <laughs> I was actually about to. <laughs> there you go. I was like, nah. The red eyes in the woods? The oh, my friends, they're not just eyes. They're eyeballs of interdimensional squirrels watching us from the branches of reality's mighty oak tree. They're the keepers of the cosmic oh, nuts. Interdimensional squirrels. <laughs> Guardians of the infinite acorn. That's actual quote. 
Hold on, I'm writing these down because they're funny. Did you actually go and generate a lot of his notes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guarding the what acorn? The inf guardians of the infinite acorn. They're the keepers of the cosmic nuts and guardians of the infinite acorn. Keepers the of the nuts. cosmic nuts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo! That's like, good stuff. You like that one? <laughs> yep. I I can give you all of these ones if you want. These ones are even better. Keep going. That old stone altar? It's not just a rock, my dear comrades. It's the cosmic microwave, the interstellar toaster oven, the universal bagel warmer. It bakes galaxies and toast dimensions, serving up cosmic breakfast for champions of enlightenment. Anyway. <clears throat> There's one that also talks about a cosmic jellyfish. Infinite acorns, plural? Nope, just one. Nope. Infinite acorn. Yeah, how could there be more than one inf infinite acorn? I gotta make sure. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, you, uh, Charlie, not Charlie, Victor, are going to Wilderness Outfitters. Yes, uh, with Charlie. Oh, both you are going? Uh, oh, sure. yeah, I would have I grabbed him and uh, took him with me. All right, he grabs you by the collar and starts dragging you towards this place. No, uh, I fight no, with I everything I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going there. As you start walking up to the building, it's kind of got a rustic feel to it. It's a wilderness store, of course it's going to. Uh, you walk inside the store. Um, there's sturdy backpacks, camping gear, and outdoor apparel that's displayed against a backdrop of vintage camping equipment. There's a very, it's very wooden in here. Um, it exudes a rustic, adventurous charm. You can kind of smell leather and the outdoors. Um, it creates a very immersive experience, so you feel like you're already in the wilderness. Um, you, you start like looking at some of the stuff, and you yeah. feel the rough texture of the outdoor fabrics and the weight of the sturdy backpacks. Yeah. Um, and the floorboards start to creak a little bit as you walk in. And as you walk, creak on the floor, a man pokes his head out, um, out from behind a door which I am going to send you a picture of this man. This, this man, the, where is he? This, where are you? There you are. This man, that man. He um, looks happy. He does. And he's like, oh, Hey folks, how 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 are you all? Are you are you doing good? Uh, what what brings you in today? Uh, we're looking for some equipment. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, what 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 are you looking for? Are you looking for tents, blankets, sleeping bags, jackets? We got it all. What what do you need? Anything for the outdoors? We have it here. Yeah, we're uh, the best we can describe this is. We need something we can strap to the back of the mule or gator we got out there and drag it on skis and it's got some weight. So basically we're looking for straps and we're looking for some kind of sled that can hold some kind of weight. Yep, uh, do you got anything like that? Duty. Yeah. They want any like ratchet straps or anything specific? Yeah, ratchet straps would work. No, nope, ratchet straps would be perfect. Perfect. Then, uh, how? What sort of weight are we talking here? How how strong do they got to be? What do you think, Charlie? Uh, take a take a guess. Uh, so how big is this altar? Uh, waist high. And like foot wide or what? 
probably about two feet. It, it was like a square, so yeah, two two feet squared. Oh, so maybe a, maybe like a like a ton, maybe a bit more. Probably somewhere around a ton. Whoa, moving something big. All right, um, give me one second here. I'll get you a few. Uh, and he heads to his back room. Comes back out and he's like, "All right, uh, I think this is the best you're gonna get." So he hands you two, uh, sorry, he hands you three thick straps um, with the ratcheting and everything on already attached. And he's like, here you go. Um, it's this amount of money. You got? Uh, no, we got uh, more, but that should be good enough for what you need. Okay, we'll take uh, double the amount of straps. And what do you got for like something that we can slide this on? Uh, well, we got it sleds. Would take that kind of weights. Do you have any sleds that can handle the amount of weight? Mm. You might need a couple. Oh, uh, we problem. will take them. Well, the problem is that it's not that big, right? You said it was like maybe two feet by three feet or four feet. No, we could put it across two sleds and have the sleds secured together to distribute the weight. Yeah, that would work. We could do that. Yeah, so if you got two two of those sleds, we could make that work. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to need some kind of strapping to secure them together, I guess. You could use the straps you have. <clears throat> Sorry, what? <clears throat> oh, we're going to need those. We're going to need those straps, I guarantee it. I don't think you're going to need all of them. I'm not there. I'm so, running. which one of us is gonna make the sacrifice of patting it and saying that ain't going nowhere? <laughs> How about Victor? We'll yeah, we'll, we'll see once we get there, I guess, because Victor hasn't seen this yet. <laughs> well, well, I guess we'll see. Um, how, like, are you going a, a long distance? Can you come back here if it's an issue, or...? Well, it's about an hour or so on the gator driving, not pulling anything. Uh, okay. Um, then I would say, yeah, might as well take as much as you can right now, right? We could always bring it back, right? We yeah. don't need it. I mean, as long as you don't use it, yeah, you can bring it back. Okay, perfect. Better to have, okay. better to have extra uh, than a, a, a Charlie. And it's this yeah. amount of money, because I don't know how much that would be worth. So you can just take it. It'd be a surprising right. amount, but not so much that we need to worry about it in this game. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, and uh, what did you say your name was? My name's Hank. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Hank. We'll probably be doing a lot of business with you. Oh, that's good to hear. I'll, uh, I'll see you around then. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, Hank. Thank you, Hank. All right, so we leave with all our stuff. Hopefully we got everything we need, and we head back to our GPS-tagged spot. 